Okay, let's make a deterministic finite automaton for this language, which is the set of all binary strings w, where w contains at least two zeros and at most one one. So let's look at some examples. If I have two zeros in a row like that, it contains at least two zeros and it has at most one occurrence of one, namely zero, and so therefore this should be accepted. If we have zero one, that has at most one one, but it does not have at least two zeros and should not be accepted. If we have two zeros and a one, by the way, the zeros don't have to come before a one, it doesn't say anything like that, but this one has two zeros and at most one one, so it should be accepted. If we have one o oh, o oh, one, it satisfies the zero requirement, but not the one requirement, and so therefore should not be accepted. So how are we going to approach this? Well, one way that we're going to try is to make a DFA for the first part, make a DFA for the second part, and use the product construction because we got this and going on in between. So let's make those two DFAs. Let's focus on at most one occurrence of one. So that one's going to be, I need to make a start state. If we read a single one, that's still okay. If we read zero ones, that's still okay. Uh, because that's at most one one. But if we read another one, then we're hosed. If we read a zero anywhere, that doesn't change the number of ones. And so therefore those need to be self loops. And now let's focus on at least two zeros. It's actually going to be very similar to this DFA, except only this state's going to be the final one. So I'm gonna arrange it vertically here for a reason that you'll see in a sec. So I'm gonna have two zeros in a row, which don't necessarily have to be contiguous with each other. But once we've read two zeros, that should be an accepting state, and that's not gonna leave the condition of having at least two zeros. I'm gonna have a self loop right here, which reads through all the rest of the characters. And then what about the ones? They don't change the number of zeros, and so those are gonna be self loops. Okay. Now let's focus on making a DFA for the intersection of the two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make nine states. So I'm gonna arrange it in like a table like this. So I'm gonna have nine states. They're gonna be the pairs from each of the original DFAs. So we had three states here, three states here. And so then now I'm going to have the start state be the start of both because that's what the product construction says. So I, the states that are final states in the original two DFAs at the same time, those ones I'm gonna make final, which are only gonna be this one and this one, because this was a final state here and a final state here, as well as this one. But no other one is gonna have both of the original ones being final. So those are the only two final states. So then how are we going to build transitions? All that we're gonna do is just follow the original transitions. So this one says, if you read a zero in this column, whoops, I made a mistake there. I'm gonna stay within the column, same here, same here. So zero is just gonna go straight down. And if we're in this row, zero is gonna go straight down to the next row. So we're gonna have a zeros transitions that look like this. And same thing right here. Bunch of zeros going down. And then what about the one, the zero transitions right here? The zero guy in here stays in this row and stays within the column. And so therefore the zeros are gonna stay right here. Now what about the ones? So the ones go across the columns, according to this, going to the last column, and this one stays in the row. So one's gonna go across, 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 and this one also goes across. And these last ones stay in the same state, kind of like the zeros before. And this one's gonna be combined. So notice that we can actually make this a bit simpler because once we have gotten to this last column, the game's over because there's no chance that we're going to satisfy being at most one occurrence of one because we have gotten two ones in order to get to that last column. We can merge these three non-final states into a single non-final state, but you're not going to get anything smaller than that. So this is a deterministic finite automaton for all the strings, binary strings W, that contain at least two zeros and at most one occurrence of one.